In 1944, the United States produced a copy of the German V-1 flying bomb. The Republic Ford JB-2 was also known as the Thunderbug, KGW or LTVN-2 Loon, and it was planned to be used in the upcoming U.S. invasion of Japan. The invasion never took place, and the JB-2 was never used in combat. However it did play a significant role in the development of American surface-to-surface -surface tactical missile systems. The U.S. learned about the existence of the German V-1 flying bomb in August 1942, when a Danish naval officer discovered a crashed V-1 on the island of Bornholm, in the Baltic Sea. A photograph and a sketch of the V-1 was sent to Britain. More intelligence data was gathered, through aerial photography and sources inside Germany, and in 1943 the U.S. decided to develop a jet-powered flying bomb. Northrop was contracted to develop the JB-1. However the JB-1 was overweight, and suffered from frequent turbine failures and several production and structural complexities. Meanwhile, the work to produce an American copy of the V-1 flying bomb was initiated. American engineers reverse-engineered German Argus AS-014 pulse jet engines, that they had obtained from crashed German V-1 bombs. In September, the first JB-2 was assembled at Republic Aviation. The American copy was slightly larger than the original V-1, and the forward support pylon of the pulse jet was shaped differently. The initial tests led to a decision to change from the preset guidance of the V-1, to a command guidance system, utilizing a radar beacon in the missile and radio command guidance from a tracking radar. Ford produced the PJ-131 pulse jet, which was copied from the original Argus engine. Early test launches of the JB-2 was conducted from Santa Rose Island in Florida. Tests were made using launch ramps, and by launching the JB-2 from a Boeing MB-17G, based at Herbert Field. Additional tests were made at Wright Field, Ohio. The JB-2 proved to be superior to the JB-1, and was considerably cheaper to produce. An order was placed for 1,000 units. Production delivery began in January 1945. The new guidance system, that was developed during 1945, made the JB-2 a much more advanced missile than the German V-1. There was competition between the Army Air Forces and the Army Ground Forces, on who would have the control of guided missiles. Because of this, the U.S. Army Air Forces quickly formed a launching squadron, intended to operate the JB-2s in the war against Germany and Japan. When the war in Europe ended, the need for JB-2s was reduced. Planning was made for deploying JB-2s in the Pacific against Japan, but when the war ended, production of the JB-2 was terminated. While no more JB-2s were produced after the war, testing continued. In January 1946, the first experimental guided missiles group was formed. The ramps used in testing were quite different from the ramps used for German V-1s. Mobile launching sites were produced, as well as fixed ramps. The U.S. Navy's version of the JB-2 was initially designated the KGW-1, and was intended for use from surface ships and shore installations. One version was developed for use from submarines. The submarine USS Cusk carried the KGW-1, which had been redesignated the LTVN-2, and successfully launched its first missile February 12, 1947. The Navy test program carried on until 1953, when the missiles were getting old since their components were deteriorating. The U.S. Army Air Forces used the JB-2 to develop missile guidance control and seeker systems, as well as for testing telemetering and optical tracking facilities. They were also used as targets for new surface-to-air and air-to-air -air missiles. The trailer ramp used for the JB-2 was later developed into a system that could be adapted for the Matador missiles. When the program was terminated in 1949, a new radio guidance and control system had been developed, that could control and land a JB-2, under control from a transmitter. A total of 1,391 JB-2s were produced. The missile was officially retired in 1950.